if you're seeing a little red dot in the corner, that means that I am. So I'm gonna give everybody just a couple minutes to catch on, um, and then I will get going. Let me just find myself and everything on here. All right, so I'm gonna just mix up my epoxy while people kind of catch on and everything. Um, so today for the epoxy, I got the other day, I got the, um, I had ordered it and I was super excited to play around with it. I started playing around with the uh, CC DIY medium viscosity. Good morning. And it's a little bit thinner than the regular stuff, but it's, I do like it a lot. Um, it's really awesome. I was working on some coasters and stuff like that. And so far I really, really like it. It's really clear and shiny. So I'm going to use that. Um, I know a lot of times I use like the fast set for, um, the epoxy method, but today I'm going to use, um, just a regular curing epoxy. How's everybody doing today? I'm so happy it's Friday. It's been a long week. Oh, congratulations. That's so awesome. Did you have a girl or a boy? So I'm not really worried about the bubbles because I'm going to be doing epoxy method, so you're not going to see any bubbles. It's going to be going on super thin. Um, so today we're going to be starting... Um, a gypsy leopard so it's going to be pretty much what I'm going to be doing today on here is uh, not a glitter swirl that you're used to seeing it's a normal glitter swirl but it's not where you actually like mix it in the epoxy and kind of sprinkle it on and let it do its thing we're gonna do the epoxy method and I have like a plethora of different glitters I'm not going to be necessarily using all of them but I wasn't sure which ones I wanted to use so I pulled out a whole bunch of colors. Ah, oh, that's so exciting. Everybody's having babies. I wish my kids were small still. <laughs> All right, so I think I'm pretty well mixed. Um, so let me just turn my turn around. And because we're doing the epoxy method, I don't have to keep letting it spin. Um, but I'm probably going to, that way I can apply my glitter just because I'm going to be, um, going in like a spiral motion to apply it. I find that the easiest way, um, to kind of get it more uniform. And then I'm going to be using this piece of parchment paper just to kind of like catch my glitter and put it back in the containers after. Oh, that's so awesome. <laughs> Congratulations again. Yeah, my kids are 14 and 15. They're about to be 15 and 16 this year. Makes me feel really old. <laughs> so this is a super, super big cup. This is a 35 ounce cup. Um, I really like, I ordered a couple of them and I really, really liked um, the screw on, these have screw on tops to them. And I really liked um, how they screwed on. I didn't think I would, but I was surprised. So this is gonna be like purple and teal. Um, I didn't have any purple spray paint. I thought I did, but the can was empty. Oh, really, Desiree? <laughs> yeah, my son is going to be 16 in April. Um, I ordered, this is, I have a couple of 35 ounces, but I ordered a case of, uh, I have a case of 20 and 30 ounces. They're like a mixed pack, so they came half and half. So I have a whole bunch of those that are screw tops. So 
so far I like it. Um, like the epoxy method, it's very easy to get um, like a nice even coat because it's not too thick. And if you decide that you want it a little bit thicker um, for like certain projects or whatever, you can just let it sit for a little bit. Um, but it's really not thin. It does cover very nice. I have some coasters, like I said I was working on. I'll show you guys in a couple minutes if you want to see them. I'm not 100% done with those yet, though. I had to clean my craft area before I came on this morning. <laughs> I'm sure you guys can relate. I was like a, a small bomb went off over here, so... Yeah, I tried to organize some of my glitter and stuff. <laughs> and as you can see, I put barely any, this is a huge cup like I said, and I didn't really use anything for epoxy, so, which I kind of anticipated, but I always have a couple little molds set out. Um, that way I have something to kind of pour it in after. Make sure I got the top good. And especially this stuff for um, when you're doing like a top coat on things, I found it is easier to get the bubbles out just because it is a little bit thinner of a consistency. Um, like for instance, the coasters I'm working on and stuff like that, I pour put like a top coat on them. And sometimes it's a little bit trickier to get some of the bubbles out just because um, regular epoxy is a little bit thicker. You don't have to heat it up quite as much. All right, I think I'm good with that part. Let me go grab those coasters to show you guys. This is a couple of them. I have a set that I'm working on. So these are the ones. So these ones I poured like a mold. Um, those red molds I've used before, I poured those. Um, and I used half and half. So I poured it in the molds, like half the glitter, and before the mold totally settled to the bottom. I poured the other one in and I let it cure. And then I popped them out. And I put painter's tape around them. Well painted the cheetah spots first and I sealed it with quick coat and a paintbrush and then I put painters tape around the edge and set them on a cup um, and I poured some resin in here that way it uh, would make a nice top coat on it and then after that I peeled the tape off and sanded them and I put a super thin coat of epoxy and then I put some uh, different dispersion colors over here and I just let them kind of sit on top of the cups. So I'll probably sand them one more time a little bit. Um, and then I'm gonna, th I think I'm gonna put some gold around the edges of them. Thank you. Yeah, I wasn't sure if they were gonna work. Um, maybe I'll do a live on these for you guys because they were kind of time consuming, but they did come out pretty neat. So I wanted to play with some leopard print after I made the live for this. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm just gonna set my extra to the side for now. Um, <clears throat> and then, so today, the definite colors we're gonna be using, this is gold. Um, most of these, I know where I got them. Some of them I don't, so I'm super sorry. Um, but this is not this one. This is just one I dumped in here, but it's just the gold. Um, and that's, I'm gonna be putting that over the white section. And then I have this pretty, it's like a tealish color I'm gonna be using. Um, and then this one right here, this is Enchanted. It's like an ultra fine holographic glitter. This is from Legendary Glitter. Um, and I'm definitely gonna be using this one right here. This is from Miss Bees. This is uh, Majestical Purple Plush. I don't know, it's 
can see how purple it is. It's real pretty. Um, and then this one is a lighter purple. This is actually the, one of the ones I used in the coasters. This is uh, Legendary Glitter. This is Mystic. And there. Apparently I didn't put the lids on very good. This is gorgeous. This is Nova. It's like a white. Um, and you guys can't really see it on the camera, but it has like purple. It's definitely white, but it throws off like a purple. It's super, super pretty. Um, I think the clear container is kind of throwing it off a little bit. Um, so I'll start with what I know I'm going to use and then the colors that I decide to add, I'll tell you what they are as I'm adding them. <laughs> so like I said, I'm definitely going to start with the gold in this area. Um, so I'm going to start sprinkling that and I'm going to go kind of light and then I'll come back because I want to kind of blend the lines after. So I'm definitely going to come back and put this on heavier but I'd rather go light and then add some versus kind of adding too much and not being able to take it off And this one you don't have to worry about it being a really crisp line, like I said, because we're going to kind of uh, blend the edges with the other colors. So I'm actually going to be going over it again a little bit higher after um, to kind of intentionally spread it a little bit farther than I want to, just so I kind of get that effect. So I have my gold. Like I said, I'm going to add more. Um, I'm just going to add another color right here, and then I'm going to come back with the gold and go over that again. So I think, I think I'm going to add this one right here, the Majestical Purple. And I like to use different consistencies of glitter. Um, this one is about the same cut size-wise. Uh, like this one right here, this is a really, really like ultra-fine glitter. So this is going to come out a lot faster, and it's not going to come out quite as even. So that one I'm going to do farther away, and it's going to be more to kind of like add some color into there. So I'm going to just use this and kind of go over the pink area a little bit. And this is, I'm just kind of like laying out where I want my colors right now, kind of. And now I'm going to go and I'm going to do, not identical, but something similar to the other pink side. And then after I do this part, I'm going to um, come back with the gold. And that's where I'm going to kind of not go super heavy because I want them to mix a tiny bit as far as um, kind of giving it like a, we're going to try to feed them into each other a little bit. So I'm going to go over this and then I'm going to come back um, with like a lighter purple. That's where I have, uh, let's see which one I'm going to use. I think I'm going to use, hmm, this one is pretty similar. This one will be good. I think I might use this one right here. This is Esmeralda and it's more of a translucent glitter. 
Um, I think that one will probably go really nicely over the gold area and that area. So I'm just going to kind of take this and I'm going to hold my shaker farther away just to give it kind of like a lighter line right there. So see how now the gold is overlapping with the purple just a tiny bit. So now I'm going to go back over it with the purple and do the same thing. And that's when I'm going to add um, the lighter color in those areas. So right now I'm not worrying necessarily about full coverage because I want to add more colors to there. So I'm just holding it further away and kind of, I'm starting before the cup, that way I can kind of see um, how fast it's going to come out, because I don't want like a big blob on there. I'm just doing the same thing kind of to the other side of the purple that way we can start tying in our other colors to there as well so I'm just gonna let it spin around so I could do it to this side <clears throat> and then after the whole thing is done that's when I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna go over it um, a little bit heavier for now. Good morning. All right, so I said I'm going to go in with this one now. So this one I'm going to use uh, just in between the gold and the other purple. And this one is Esmeralda from SB's. Keep opening the wrong side. So this one is going to be between the gold and the purple that I'm going to do this one. And this is a finer, a bigger cut of glitter. Um, but like I said, it's kind of, it's not translucent by any means, but it's more of a sheer glitter. You can see the, the base color more. And see how it tied it together much nicer than having just the dark and the light color. liking the way that looks. So I'm going to leave that alone for now. Um, and now I'm going to go in with the darker colors and then I'm going to come back over to here. That way I don't have to worry about any of that stuff moving over here anymore. Uh, let's see. So <clears throat> the fat line right here, I'm going to do with this one. This is, um, I want to say it's about the same cut as this one. So it's not a fine glitter, but it's not a chunky. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna let it turn around and then I'm gonna um, go just in a swirl motion.
and you don't have to use this many colors either by any means um like i said i wasn't sure how many i wanted i do like to use a few different colors because i find it helps to kind of blend in the lines a little better especially when you're doing such a large contrast of colors um sometimes it's really hard to get the lines so they're not hard So I'm just going farther away and I'm doing kind of the in-between just so some little specks kind of get here and there. All right, and then this one, this is Enchanted and this is one of those really, really fine ones I was talking about. And this is from Legendary Glitter. Yes. I, there was a base paint with, um, I think it was watermelon, the pink was, and then like a teal color and white. I had spray painted on there previously. So now I'm going to just go on this part and I'm going to do it kind of light and then I will most likely go back with like, um, I think I'm going to do this color right here. I don't know what color it is. I'm super sorry, but it's a chunky. It throws off a lot of pretty blues and it has a little bit of purple that it throws off too. Um, so I think I'm going to add a little bit of that in there. Let's see. I want to see how fast this comes out. So this one, I'm just going to put it kind of like over these areas right here. So now that I have the whole thing covered, like I said, I'm going to go over uh, this area where the blue and purple meet with this. Uh, let me see. A little spoon somewhere. I don't usually dump on like the chunkier ones like this. Um, because the shakers really don't fit. And I find I make more of a mess with the dumping it on there. So I usually just use like my spoon and I'll kind of put it on. Oh, thanks. <laughs> All right, so purple and blue, that's the line we're going for. So I'm just gonna kinda, and a lot of this is gonna fall off because it's a thicker cut. But like I said before, I'm not going for like full coverage in this area. I just want it to kinda stick here and there. And I'm only gonna go over that with this um, once because it's sticking really well. And like I said, it wasn't really going for um, like a full coverage right here. I just wanted to give it a little, little pop of some color that'll go nice together. And I think that's good with this part. And then, so now that I did that part, now I'm gonna go over these again. Um, like this area right here, I'm going to go over and I'm going to dust it with the gold. Um, I like doing the epoxy method. I like to do two coats of glitter. I found that when you apply it, um, it does kind of settle a little bit and you get much better coverage and it makes a lot more kind of like dimension if you add two coats of glitter. And some of this isn't going to stick. Um, just because there already is a coat on there, but it is gonna make it, um, you will see a difference as far as your coverage wise. It's kinda hard to see where I'm shaking it because there's a big glare from all the glitter. <laughs> so now I'm just gonna go on, that's why I start ahead, just in case it blobs out. So now I'm just going to do the bottom section under the gold. It's kind of caked up in there. So 
yeah, I usually try to pick out colors ahead of time. Sometimes I looked through all my colors today when I was organizing. And I honestly, I, I couldn't decide which ones I wanted to use. So sometimes I just kind of wing it. <laughs> I kind of play it however it kind of looks on the cup. I might use different colors than I originally anticipated. I'll do that after. Um, this one, I'm actually going to do a Gypsy Leopard on this. Um, so I'll go over that in a couple of minutes when I'm done with the glitter part. Um, so there's, the next step is going to be, I'm going to epoxy this. Um, just like I do with the regular Milky Ways. And then after I do that, um, I'm going to use Mod Podge and paint, um, some leopard print on there so I, I have two colors I have picked out I'll show you guys uh, for the next section um, what I'm gonna be doing on that so I can go in a little bit heavier now and not really worry too much about it like not sticking where I don't want it to because I already have a really good base coat down um, it's not just gonna stick in random places right now I'm just kind of going more for like the coverage wise because I already have the chunky down and everything so when I go back after this I'm gonna brush it off lightly um, with a fan brush just to get all the loose glitter off um, I may put a coat of quick coat on here you don't necessarily have to sometimes I like to if I have like a thicker cut of glitter or you can just spray seal it or my Milky Ways, I don't even seal them because I don't, I don't feel like I need to. Um, and similar to this, it's not really that huge of a deal if you have like um, one or two pieces that move a little bit. But it's not really going to move because um, you've already dusted it off with a fan brush. I found personally anyways. So you can kind of do it your own way. I'm just trying to peek and see what color I want to go over it with. So I think this color is all set. I got a pretty good coverage with that one. So I think I might go over it one more time just with this one, just around the edges right here. I don't really think I need to too much, but I'm going to just a little bit, just over this area where they kind of meet a little bit. Just to kind of bring it together a little bit more. And then I think I might go over with the purple in that spot just one more time. Because I didn't go over it in that spot either. Actually, you know what? I might add some of this in there. This is, I think this actually might be the right one. This is Fairy from Recollections. I love this glitter. Um, and I got it from a buy-in to the same exact color. And they have this at Michael's. Um... But I absolutely, I love this color. So I'm just going to go over it a little bit right here. Just to kind of fill in whatever little gaps might be left over. And just to blend it a little bit. Because I didn't go over this area twice. Um like the other ones, so there'll still be little spots where this will stick nice. And then, so for the bottom part, 
I'm not really super concerned about it. Um, usually what I do is I'll just take my spoon for the bottom of the cup. I know it goes with so many things, like even with your base paint and stuff like that. You can do so much with it. Oh, this glitter is pretty. Can you guys see how pretty this glitter is? Looks like there's kind of a big shadow over there. So I'm just going to take my spoon and kind of put the extra on there. That way, the bottom of the cup is still pretty. Some people don't finish the bottom of theirs. That's totally fine. I like to put glitter on it, too. So give me just one sec to cover this, and then I'll go over um, what I'll be doing during the next one. So I have a couple colors that I picked out. Um, I got this really nice, like burnt like coppery color that I think I'm going to use for the leopard spot. I think it'll go really nice with that. So the spots are actually going to be going, oops, I didn't even hit the cup with that one. <laughs> the spots are actually going to be going um, on the purple and turquoise area more towards like this oh, Jesus. hang on I just scratched my cup let me fix it um so they're going to be going on the purple and turquoise area um so hang on let me fix this real quick not a big deal and then uh we're going to be adding some like swirls and stuff over here in the portion after that. So give me just a minute. There we go. So I just, like I said, I hit it with my finger. So as I did was I kind of took my stick a little bit and I moved the epoxy just so it was wet. And then I just sprinkled a little more glitter on there. And now you can't see it at all. Um... I just I think I have to get the bottom pretty good. Yeah, we'll be good with the bottom. Oh, thanks. Just have fun with it. I don't know. They come out a hot mess sometimes. I can't lie. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> I found as far as like blending and stuff, I found the easiest thing is um just like I said to kind of hold it further away. And if you're going to use it out of the shaker, um, just hold it farther away. It'll come out a lot less. Or what I really like to use, I don't use them as much anymore, but what I really like to use is actually these right here. If you have kind of like um, a heavy hand with glitter. So I found if you, I got these on Amazon, they were like $3. And I make kombucha and stuff like that. So I use them to strain my stuff. And they came in like a three pack. So I kept this one for my crafts. So if you actually, I'll show you guys right here. Hopefully you can see. Um, this is a dark color. So if you actually use your shaker and shake it into it, it makes the glitter come out. It spreads it out. Can you see kind of how it's like spreading the glitter out when I put it down? It kind of just makes it go into like a little cloud. Um, it makes it much, much easier. So if you're having a hard time with blending, I suggest getting these. You might even be able to get them at the dollar store. But like I said, I think it was like a couple dollars for three of them. And they work awesome. And it makes it come out much, much finer than even using um, the ombre blenders. Because the ombre blenders are awesome, but they kind of remind me um, of having it come out of your shaker. So... If you're interested, definitely I would check it out. Uh, so the next step. I skipped a step when I was explaining it. So I'm not going to, um, I'm only going to brush this off. I'm going to let this cure. And I'm going to brush this off with my fan brush. 
I'm not going to epoxy this yet. I was jumping the gun when I explained. So I'm not going to epoxy this yet. I'm just going to take my fan brush and brush it off. Um, and that's when we're going to do the next live. So we're going to be painting the actual leopard print right onto the glitter. We're not using uh, anything, no epoxy yet. So we're going to be using, um, I just have Mod Podge. Um, and for the actual black part of the leopard print, we're going to take a small cup and mix a little bit of black paint with it. So that way we have um, some black glue, pretty much. Um, you know what? I've had them for a couple years. So let me look on Amazon, Lori, and I can put the link in here. Um, so I can make sure I'm telling you guys the right one. Because honestly, I don't remember what they're called. So I can let you guys know in a little while. So we're going to need a little bit of regular Mod Podge. And we're going to make a little bit of a black. And I'll do that um, and with you guys. You can use um, acrylic paint. You can use uh, your pigments. Whatever you normally use to color things. You can definitely. I just wouldn't suggest like alcohol ink. Um, because we're going to be making the black parts. And then we're going to be putting black glitter on top of it. So we're going to have this for the next live. Um, and I picked out for the center of the spots. I picked out this really, really pretty. It's like a holographic. It's like, I want to say like bronze. It's really, really pretty. Um, this is called Sunspear and it's from Legendary Glitter. This is another really, really fine. It's like an ultra fine glitter. This would probably be gorgeous for um, the tacket method. That would be really, really pretty. So I'm going to use this color and... I don't know where I put my black. Uh, okay, here we go. And I'm going to use this black right here. So this is another, this is a holographic black. And this is, I believe, Eclipse from Legendary Glitter. It starts with an E. If I'm wrong, I'll correct myself in the feed after. But I'm pretty positive this is Eclipse. Um, it's a really, really, really pretty black. Uh, so I think that might be it. So do you guys have any more questions right now? Like I said, I will attach um, a link for the correct strainers if you guys are interested in trying them out. It makes it really, really simple. In my opinion, it's even easier than the ombre blenders. It's like a game changer. <laughs> I've been using those since I first started making cups. All right. So on that note, I hope you guys have a wonderful Friday. Um, I will probably do the leopard prints, if that's cool with you guys. Um, you could do it on Monday. So I'm not going to do anything with this cup. I'm just going to brush it off. That's the only thing I'm going to do. And then we're going to have our next live. No epoxy, no nothing. We're going to be painting right on the glitter. No problem. Um, I started doing cups a little bit over a year ago. I believe it was like... January, maybe beginning of February last year, I started doing them. I got a cricket from my husband for Christmas last year, and it just kind of spiraled from there. <laughs> All right, so have a wonderful Friday, and I will talk to you guys soon. And I can't wait to do the leopard prints on this. So if you have any more questions, definitely ask in here or ask in the group. Um, and hopefully I can answer your question or one of the awesome people in there can. Have a great day. That means that I still am. Um, so today we're going to be starting the spots on our gypsy leopard. So let me just do the usual and log on to, um, my phone so I can make sure the comments pop up. They pop up a little different when you're on a live. And then I will start explaining what we're going to be doing. Um, so this is the tumbler that we glittered the other day. So I didn't do any, I didn't seal it. I didn't do anything to it. Um, the only thing I did was I took my fan brush and I brushed 
all of the excess glitter off after it cured. So this right now is just raw glitter. No seal, no nothing. Just glitter with the epoxy method. Um, so today what I'm going to be using is just regular Mod Podge. Good morning. Um, I found the dishwasher safe one if you're using um, inks and stuff, which we're not going to be today. But just so you guys know, I found... Um, I know you can seal your inks with Mod Podge and all that, but the dishwasher safe one, whatever chemical is in that, it makes your inks run. So that was just a little kind of FYI. So that way you guys know. Um, if you do do inks, don't try to seal it with dishwasher safe Mod Podge because it'll make it run everywhere. Um, so you don't need a glove for this part. I have to go to work later and I'm already going to be covered in glitter. So I'm trying to make that as little as possible, which isn't going to happen, but we can try. <laughs> So, um, I have my pool noodle in here. I just wanted to show you guys because I know this is a common question too because this is a very large cup. Um, so I figured I would show you what I do in order to ensure that my cups don't fall off the turner. Um, so like I said, this is just a pool noodle. I pick them up when I see them when they're bigger and this one was in diameter wise was a lot wider than the ones that you see at most places. So I picked this up last year and I was super happy I did. Um, so I just take shelf liner and I reuse this over and over again um, until I can't use it anymore. You can use them for a long time. So, and then I just put it in here, kind of as far as I can get it. And then after that, I will just push the arm down in there. Good morning. And then we are good to go and it's not going to fall off your turner or fall off your arm when you're trying to seal it um, and you should be all set. So I'm going to start off, um, like I said, we're going to be using Mod Podge. Um, to do the black spots, we're going to be actually mixing in a little cup, we're going to be mixing some black um, acrylic into some Mod Podge as well. So we're going to do that part after we do the spots and this is a really nice like coppery brown I thought it was a like, gorgeous color um, it's like a holographic ultra fine glitter and it's called Sunspear this one is from legendary glitter so this is what I'm gonna be using for um, the brown spots so I guess we'll start with that and then in between the spots I want to let the spots dry for a couple minutes so I'm gonna take this off I actually made, I experimented yesterday and made a bowl-ish thing with some epoxy. Um, so we're gonna be doing something similar to this on Saturday. That's what the live I made, that's what I'm gonna be doing. So this is, right now we're just gonna be using the plain Mod Podge, nothing mixed into it. Let me grab a paper towel, it was super quick. I knew I wanted to grab something. For this part, we're going to be using an angled brush like this. There's different size ones, different thicknesses. This one has seen better days. I actually trimmed it because I got some paint on the end. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, right now, because all we're doing right now is actually we're going to be on the gold part. We're going to be kind of forming the spots. So we're just going to be taking the Mod Podge and we're going to be going over these gold areas just here and there and adding um, some of the leopard spots on there and I was actually deciding because this is such a gigantic cup I was almost thinking that I may want to use the fatter brush so let me do a couple and then I may go to this bigger brush just because this is such a huge cup And I just have a little cup of water. That way I can put my brush in there with the Mod Podge and rinse it off. That's why I needed the paper towel. All right. So I'm gonna start with a smaller brush. And like I said, for a normal cup, you can definitely use the smaller one. This is just massive. <laughs> so I'm gonna start at the top. And I'm not gonna worry too much about staying right in the gold. I'm um, actually, some of them are probably gonna be kind of in between where the goldish is and where the purple is right here just so it's not like 
a straight line. So I'm going to start and I'm just going to kind of make an area like that. And I'm going to do a couple and then I'm going to put on the glitter and then I'll do a couple more. That way it doesn't dry out too much. Um, when you apply it over glitter, it does come out in a very nice consistency. It's a lot thicker than if you just apply it um, on a tumbler by itself. I'll do one more and then we'll add some glitter to this guy. Then you want to add enough to where your um, glitter sticks nice and you get a nice coating, but you don't need to make it so it's like a big blob on there because when your Mod Podge dries, it could be kind of lumpy looking. So we have that just like that right there. And then we're just going to put some glitter on. And then to get it off, I found the easiest thing to do is to kind of tap it with something metal, kind of. And it just falls off really nice. You can tap your turner arm too, um, but I found tapping it with something that's metal, it gets it off the best. So see, now we have some lines right there. Uh, it doesn't have a layer over the glitter. Um, it has one to apply the glitter, but it doesn't have one over the glitter. So right now, I am just applying this on the glitter itself. All I did was just brush it off. So I'll probably add one like right here, I think. Hope you guys can see it's really shiny, so it makes it... So I'm just kind of making like, almost like ovals. They don't have to be perfect. But just um, oval-ish. Kind of going all in the same direction. So now we'll add a little bit more glitter. You guys can see it on the camera, I'm pretty sure. No problem. So I don't want to make them like too perfect. I'm not trying to make them so they're like not lined up. Because <laughs> I don't want like just like a straight, um, all these to be like lined up like perfectly. Because leopard print's not like symmetrical. So I don't. I want to try not to make it like that, but we'll see. <laughs> and like I said, I'm going to go over the purple a little bit. Add another one right there. And this part doesn't really take too long. And like I said, I'm gonna let the um, this color dry for a couple of minutes, and I'll show you guys this, and then we'll go back and we'll do the black part, just so it can sit for a couple of minutes. That way, if there's any Mad Podge exposed over this color, um, the black doesn't stick to it. Good morning. And I'm just doing this over my parchment paper, that way I don't um, waste any of this glitter. So we'll do one up here. So see, they're kind of like little ovals, but they're not <clears throat> perfect. And then when we do the black over it, we're going to be doing um, 
kind of like details around them, but they're going to be all different. They're not going to be just like a black circle around them. And that's what's going to kind of give them character and make them look a lot different than the rest of them. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure I'm getting y'all on camera. <laughs> Almost anything I'm just gonna put like just a couple more on the bottom and then we'll be done with this part and I'm just tapping it I'm not like whacking it I'm just barely touching it but see how it comes off really really nice and you don't have to really brush it too much. So I'm just gonna add a couple more right here in the bottom and then we'll be good to go. And I actually may use this because I, I pour way too much all the time. I see some people put them in little like the plastic condiment containers and it's an awesome idea too. Um, I like to put them in a squeeze bottle but for this case we can't really do that, so condiment containers, if you could find them really cheap, um, with the little snap tops are like literally so perfect for this. Alright, so we'll stick one more right there, just to kind of bring it down to the bottom. I pretty much have it. I just have a couple, like I said, kind of, maybe I'll add one more right here. I just have a couple kind of going over where the um, purple and gold kind of, just to tie it in there a little bit. Like I said, just so it's not like a big strip of uh, the brown right there. And I think that's good. Maybe I'll do one more right here. I lied. And then I'm gonna let this sit for just a couple minutes. It's just the glitter. All right, so as you can see now we have, I'm gonna put this in water. This is just, I like to make use some of my extra like molds and stuff. I like to use them instead of wasting plastic cups. Um, they work really awesome for that. And these little things, I love to use these for like paint. Then you just wash them out after and you reuse them. All right, so let me put my glitter back in the container. And then while I'm letting this sit for just a couple minutes, um, I'm going to take this guy off of here so we can see how it came out. here I used this mold and when I do it Saturday I'm actually gonna use the bottom of a plate how it has the little divot in it kind of I'm gonna be putting um, a piece of saran wrap over that and using that sort of like a mold like to just hold the kind of shape so for this one I did this um, and then I took it out of the mold and I set it on the saran wrap and then I draped it over the top and then I just stuck little cotton balls in here that way it kind of um, stuck up in certain areas. I let it sit for like three and a half hours before I did this part. And I just set it on top of a mason jar. You can put it on top of whatever you want to. 
I can do that part after. See, just my little cotton balls in there. Let me take these guys out. And then, so supposedly the serrant wrap is supposed to peel right off. So I guess we will find out now. Oh, it does. Leaves it nice and shiny, it looks like. Oh, and I, yep, so it all came off super clean and it didn't break or stick to it or anything. And then, so this is my little bowl. It looks really neat too. Here's the back of it. This was the top of the mold. And then there's different um, colors of glitter and mica and stuff in here and I use my heat gun to kind of blow it around. And then in here, I may actually take these. I like to use cuticle cutters to kind of trim off the little sharp pieces. Um, so there's like a little piece here, but the rest of it is really smooth. So you could just kind of clip them off. And then this is what the inside looks like. So you can just kind of put your little goodies and stuff in there. What do y'all think? Oh, thank you. So I thought this is what we're going to kind of be doing on Saturday. We're going to be doing something like that. But I think the shape of mine may be a little bit different. Um, but this mold actually did work perfect for this because it left the edges nice and thick. Some of the ones I've seen, the edges are super, super thin. And I get worried they're going to be kind of like sharp. Because when epoxy dries, it can be pretty sharp as well. So, that's what we're going to be doing. Sorry, I'm just checking it out. Okay. So, we'll set that guy to the side. Because it's done. And we'll get going on the black part. Because I didn't put this super thick. It's not dry fully. Um, but, it is definitely dry enough to start the next step. So, let me just rinse the Mod Podge off my brush. And dry it off and then we'll mix this right here we're gonna mix that like I said with some black acrylic that way um, with the leopard prints we get some really nice coverage on those areas that's good enough I'm not gonna use this guy so we'll put him up here So I have about, I have a lot in here. It's probably about full up to there. But we're not gonna um, worry too much about that because I'm probably put it in something to save it. So my black acrylic, I'm gonna put probably like a third of the amount of Mod Podge. And I wanna mix it until it's kind of like a blackish. It's going to be a, like a gray because obviously it's mixed with white right now. And I have a chunk of acrylic in here. Uh, let's see. I haven't used the black in a while. <laughs> Alright, we're good. So you don't have to mix it forever like you do epoxy or anything like that. You just want it so it looks kind of even. So it's like that. See, it's a grayish, but it'll be black when we... Um, apply it to here because obviously the Mod Podge will dry and it'll turn clear. So, and then um, this is a hollow black that I'm going to be using. This is Eclipse from Legendary Glitter. Sorry, I had a brain fart. Um, if you're looking for more of a black black, this is a really pretty black too. Um, this is Obsidian from CCDIY and it stays like a really nice black once you apply epoxy to it which I like. Some of them, it's an issue because they turn like mud. They're kind of a pain in the butt. It looks really pretty and then you put your epoxy on it and it just disappears. <laughs> All right, so we have this guy nice and mixed. So I'm gonna do the same thing and start at the top. 
So maybe this way. I'll hold it this way. Let me take my top off of this. And I don't have a shaker in here. I was kind of kicking myself in the butt. I threw it away because I didn't need it. And I kind of shaked it. Which is fine. It's not the end of the world. But it does make it easier. <laughs> so I'm just going to take my black. And I'm going to put a decent amount. Um, but it's not going to be anything like crazy. I think I like holding it here better. I can kind of visually like see what I want. I just don't want to hold it on the print. So I'm going to do these all different. So I'm going to start at the first one. And I'm just going to kind of like irregularly make like a little pattern on the bottom and the top. Kind of like around it. And like I said, you're going for irregular and not quite perfect. It'll make it more, uh, I guess, it's obviously not realistic because it's in glitter, but the less the same they are, the better it'll, it's going to look. So like that one, we'll take it and kind of bring it around a little bit. So I'm gonna put some glitter on here just so you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about. See, so then you get these really nice spots. And that's why we started with kind of like the ovals to begin with. Once you add the acrylic, the consistency is a little bit different. So it's not quite as thick as um, your normal paint or your normal Mod Podge. It gets thinner. So just if you're when you guys do that, just kind of be warned that it's not going to be. You can get it droopy pretty easy. And it looks so much different just adding the black spots to it. Sorry, this cup's super awkward. So I guess we are going to flip it. Because I'm going to end up messing up the gold on the bottom. But this is why you want to make sure that your um, Mod Podge is at least dried for the most part with your gold. Like I said, so that way, because if your Mod Podge is still wet, like really wet on your brown or whatever color you use, when you put the black on and you dump it on, you're going to have tons of flecks of little black on there. And you definitely don't want that. Thank you. 
I know, I can't wait. I hope you guys try this. It's, it is really fun. It's weird how much, um, adding a black, like, really, really changes it, like, a lot. I mean, obviously, you're adding the black, but it just makes it look so much different once you add the black to it. And I'm just, like I said, I'm just doing a couple, um, because I don't want the acrylic and my pod mix to start to dry. So, I could probably do a couple more, but I don't want to do it super, super thick, like I said, because when your Mod Podge dries, you don't want, like, that gobby, like, look to it. So, you want to get a nice coat, but you don't want to goop it on there. So for this part, I'm just using like the tip of it, this part. That's how I'm making the design on this. And you can look at like a picture too. Um, if you want more of a reference, it does help even when I do like my tie-dye and stuff like that. It helps a lot if I look at something to kind of not do it exactly like it, but just kind of like to get a visual kind of reference of what I'm going for. Ah, uh, that's not good. Yeah, it's like tis the season for people not feeling well. I hope they feel better soon. You can always catch the replay too if you want, if you miss a part. It's no worries. So that's what we got so far. Now, so can you see why kind of now why I added it um, in these areas too? Because if I think if I added it just on the gold, it would be very small. And I just think it looks better when it kind of goes over the faded areas a little bit. Kind of makes it seem like it belongs there a little more. <laughs> yeah, not feeling good is definitely. Especially when your kids don't feel good. It's awful. I think I want to make this a little bit thicker up here. Down there.
they can get a couple more done and doing two at a time. There we go. Look at three. <laughs> We're almost done now. We only got like ten more on there, maybe. So I just kind of like dab it on because I don't want like a brush mark look. I like it when it's kind of like more irregular. So that's all I'm doing is I'm kind of just going like this with it when I put it on there. I love this color together. What do you guys think? Those two colors look wicked nice together, right? Like that bronzy color. I'm glad I used that one. I had fun that one for a while and I, I don't really get an order for very many things where I have to use like brown or like copper or gold, yes, but not really like the darker colors. Um, so I was kind of excited when I, cause I cleaned out my craft stuff this weekend and I found I found a lot of stuff I forgot I had. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. And if you guys do this and you decide that you wanted to add more black, you can just wait for your Mod Podge to dry and you could definitely go back over it um, and some little areas if you wanted to change it up a little bit. For sure, it's no problem. Just make sure your Mod Podge is dry because again, if you start messing with it when it's not, you're going to end up with some clumpy looking areas and you definitely don't want that going on. And it's supposed to be really warm here today, which I'm pretty excited about because I'll be able to run outside and um, seal this, which is nice. It's supposed to be almost 70 here today, and it's just the clear paint. So once this dries in a little while, I'll probably wait like, I want to say like 45 minutes, give or take a little bit. You definitely want to make sure it's dry, dry uh, before you seal it. Otherwise, you're going to end up with some things you don't want going on. All right, let me just add these last three. And then, let's see if I could do this without being clumsy. So that is gonna be our leopard print. So, the next part, I'm going to seal this um, and I'm going to add a coat of epoxy to it. 
I jumped the gun when I was explaining it last time, like I said. So dry Mod Podge, super good. Um, I'm gonna lightly dust this area off with my fan brush. You could use a air gun or whatever before I seal it. Um, because uh, if you don't, when you go to spray seal it and you have little stray pieces of glitter, the air from your spray is going to make your glitter move a little bit. And you definitely don't want that. So I would suggest blowing it off with an air gun. Um, you could use anything, hair dryer, um, no heat, whatever, just to try to get the extra glitter out there. Eight degrees. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that cold. <laughs> I'm gonna stick this back in my water. Oh my goodness, I can't believe that, eight degrees. Thank you. So, um, seal, we're gonna do one coat of epoxy on this. Um, I don't have any super chunky glitter in here, so one coat should definitely be plenty in order to go on to the step where we are actually adding the colors on here. Um, I wanna say, Thursday I will do that part and that will be the last step that we have to do um, and then you can decal it or whatever it is that you may want to do to it so um, is that good with you guys doing it on Thursday I want to do it sooner but realistically I have other things that I should be doing <laughs> um, so like I said, Thursday we'll do that. Um, if you want to follow along, we're going to be using some acrylic colors of your choice. Uh, I may be using some of these dispersion colors that I have. You don't have to use them. You can just use acrylic. Um, so you're going to want one or two colors of acrylic. And I'm probably going to use, I want to say, like a gold mica. Not positive, but you want probably like one or two mica colors. And that's what we're going to be doing um, this area in. We're not going to be fully covering it. We're just going to be adding a couple details. And maybe if you want to add a little bit of chunky, grab like a very sheen chunky. We can sprinkle a couple pieces on there after we're done. So, on that note, I hope you guys have... Uh, so we're gonna spray seal um, brush it off with a fan brush or whatever spray seal triple thick or clear sealer like a spray just a clear spray paint um, that way your glitter doesn't move around and then we're gonna seal it as far as um, epoxy you're gonna put a coat of epoxy when I say seal I meant spray paint um, or some people may use Mod Podge to seal or whatever the case might be. Um, just make sure you do that. That way your glitter does not move around. Because otherwise, as soon as you add it, because it's the Mod Podge, even with epoxy it does it a little bit, but as soon as you start moving it and stuff, you're going to have pieces of glitter floating around everywhere. You're welcome. Um, so I'm going to stick this on the turner for a little bit. Just to make sure. Not actually turn it on, but... It's just gonna kind of hang out there for a little bit. That way I can make sure this Mod Podge is nice and dry before um, I spray it. Um, I'm trying to think. I can try, maybe we'll try for Wednesday. Is Wednesday good for you guys? Wednesday morning? Maybe we'll do it Wednesday. I'm dying to get this done. I've been waiting to do this for a while. So we'll do Wednesday morning. I'll make an event later today uh, for Wednesday morning. So acrylic and mica is going to be what we need. And again, we're going to spray seal this with some kind of sealer to hold the glitter down and epoxy. And then that's when I'm going to see you next. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day. You too, Fatima. <laughs> All right, have a great Monday. If you're seeing the little red dot in the corner, that means that I still am. So let me just myself on my phone and all that good stuff and I will get going with what we're doing all right so
So I am just mixing my epoxy right now. I started mixing it a minute ago just to get a little bit of a head start. So that way you guys weren't waiting forever for me to mix this up. And then I will go over the colorants and mica and all the stuff I will be using. So today we are going to be finishing the Gypsy Leopard that I did the other two parts on. Hey! How's everybody doing this morning? I'm just finishing up mixing my epoxy and I'm going to go over everything. So, um, with this you can use um, really anything for this step. I'm going to use um, some of the dispersion and intense colors from CC DIY. Uh, this one is Tsunami and the other one is Royal Purple. You can definitely use acrylics or if you have, um, let me see if I can see where they are. I rearranged all my stuff and I'm not sure where I put them. Um, I like to use acrylic inks. You can definitely use that. Any kind of colorant or anything like that is definitely fine to use for this part. Yeah, decals can be, they can be a pain. <laughs> Especially when you have a whole bunch to do at once. Sometimes I put them off until the same day. I try to split them up because if I have to do them all in one day, I'm like, oh my goodness. I feel like I'm never going to be done with them. So I think I'm almost done mixing this. I really wanted this to sit for a minute kind of while I explained all this. Um... Because if you let your epoxy sit for a couple minutes, it really helps with the uh, bubbles and all that good stuff. But I think I'm almost done. I Yeah, join the club with that one. <laughs> I love them once they're put on, but I hate actually the process of everything in between with that. The whole making them. <laughs> All right, I think I'm pretty good. Like I said, I did start mixing this um, before I came on, so you guys didn't have to wait forever for me to mix this up. So since the last live, um, I added the spots in the last live. Um, so after that, what I did is I made sure that I brushed it off really good with my fan brush, like I said, because um, sometimes even when you use a spray sealer, it works awesome, but the spray will actually take some of the loose glitter and move it. And you definitely don't want that. So I definitely recommend, um, brushing it off with something. You'll see a big difference if you haven't tried that before. Makes it much easier. Um, so I added the spots with you guys and then I sealed the whole entire cup. And then after that, I added one coat of epoxy. So the whole thing is relatively smooth. There's a little bit down here and a little bit up here um, that are definitely gonna be probably sanded a tiny bit. It's not super rough, um, but after this part, when it cures, that's when I will lightly sand those areas. That way I don't ruin the glitter. Because regardless of the glitter you have, if you sand it um, too soon, you're gonna ruin it. So let's get to the good part. Um, and another thing I wanted to point out, and a lot of people always have questions with that too, is about your cup being level. And I know a lot of people, um, have figured it out and this and that. So especially with a cup that's this big, cause this is a 35 ounce cup. So sometimes they sit really funny on your turner. They'll be really high here and they'll kind of almost like wobble at the end of it. So I have these little levels. I got them in like a two pack or three pack on Amazon a while ago and they're awesome because you can't always go by your turner your turner my thing is on the top of here I don't know if you can see it your turner does not necessarily sit the same as your arms do good morning thank you so what I like to do with this is I take it and I actually put it on my cup so I'll put it here and so my cup could actually be adjusted a tiny bit. So, cause you can see the little level right here. So that's an easy way. I kind of let it turn a couple times and it's not gonna be perfect, but that's the easiest way I found um, to level your actual 
arm itself versus having to try to worry about leveling your turner and all that other stuff. So I hope that helps. So like I said, we're going to be doing um, two different colors. I'm going to use this really pretty like turquoise color and and like I said, that's Tsunami. This is royal purple. It's like a really dark, dark purple. And then I'm going to use a couple of micas. So for the mica, I'm going to use um, this really pretty purple. It's Galactic Grape. And I have this really, really pretty mica. It's uh, Gilda. And then I have Mermaid. So those are the colors I'm going to be using. And then I actually have been trying to find something to use these on. So I think I might try these. These are actually... Um, flakes. I don't know if you can see them. It looks like it's pretty, there's a huge glare on that. So these are like some flakes. So I might add a little bit in epoxy and put a tiny bit on there as well. So let me just divide all this stuff up. Let's see. Bye. I didn't think I had enough cups, but now I have a mountain. One, two, three. I think I got six different colors going on. And I poured a lot of um, epoxy. I do have a mold set out, so I'm going to kind of put my um, colorants in here and then. Um, I'm going to apply a coat of epoxy to here and then we're going to start um, adding the colors to the purple and the teal parts to this. I usually do it before but I'm using a few colors of mica so I don't want the, the powders to kind of flop over there. So we're going to do it a little bit different today. And you don't need a lot of the colors um, epoxy wise, we're just going to be using a very little amount. So I'm just pouring kind of, I want to say, maybe like a quarter of an inch at the bottom of these. And that'll be definitely plenty. a lot of mica I like to have when I do anything with mica I like to have the colors really really kind of pop out so I'm sure I probably put more than I need to but I really like them too because I love the shimmer and I love how like it just add, it looks so pretty when you kind of add a little bit more <laughs> so I get a little heavy-handed with that stuff oh this is a messy one all up in the top of the bag and this one's not gold it's kind of like a mix between like a gold and a copper but I thought it would kind of tie really nice with how it's kind of like in between with the cheetah spots I'm sorry the leopard spots So now that I have the micas mixed, I'm going to add the coat of um, epoxy on the top of my tumbler before I actually pour 
these in there. Um, this one is similar, it reminds me of acrylic paint when you add it to the epoxy, it makes it thicker. And I don't, I want it thick, but I don't want it too thick. So I'm gonna add this, um, just a thin coat on my tumbler really quick, and then we will proceed to add the rest of the colors on there. So this is this part is similar to um, it reminds me of kind of like doing the Milky Way how thick you want to add your coat you want it to cover it but not be too thick um, so that way when you add your colorants on top um, it doesn't make like a big pool because I know sometimes like the top and the bottom especially for you know um, sometimes they can get a little bit too swirly more than you want them. So it's just kind of covering it until when you glide your finger kind of it just goes nice and you don't feel um, like a ton of bumps under there. I think I almost have it and then I'm just gonna get the top real quick and we'll mix up the rest. That way too while this is turning, um, and I'm mixing the last couple colors, it'll kind of give it a chance to kind of even out a little bit, even though it is a very thin coat. And depending on the epoxy that you use and how fast it sets, they're all different. Um, some of them are thinner, some are thicker. So some of them, if you're going for um, something you don't want to really move around to too much, you may want to let it sit even a couple minutes longer than I did. This one's not super thick. This is the medium viscosity um, one, so it's not super, super thick. All right, I think we are about good to go. Good morning. Thanks for joining me to make a mess today. <laughs> add way too much of this stuff. 
and it gets like super thick. Like I said, it reminds me of acrylic. If you put too much, it gets like crazy thick. All right, that's good. Are oh, you taking a break? <laughs> yeah, mine. I did most of mine this weekend, but then. I did good. I surprised myself. I thought I'd get distracted by the stuff I found more than I did. <laughs> I'll have to do the rest of it this weekend. I didn't get to finish. Thank you. You know what? I actually want to make one of these for myself. If this wasn't like an order, I'd probably go end up keeping it. Because <laughs> these are like my favorite colors. Uh, yeah, so this is um, the intense color. This stuff, when you pour it, it's like water, and it stains bad. Um, when I first got one of these, I had the one of the blue ones, the cobalt color, and oh my goodness. So this is, I just put a couple drops in it, and this is how, it's like a really, really deep, deep purple. Um, I just put a couple drops, so that's all you need. So anyways, I didn't have the top screwed on the other one, and I thought I did, and I went to pick it up, and it fell everywhere, and it, my hands were blue for days. It was horrible, but it was a really pretty blue, but it was just, yeah, it was a nightmare. It reminds me of, like, getting alcohol ink on something. It just doesn't come off. And then, so, I got these, too. I have, a, like, five of these, and I've been dying to use them. I didn't know what I was going to use them on. So I think I'm going to use, like I had said, um, for you guys that are just popping in, I think I'm going to add a little bit of these. These are flakes, so they're cut bigger. So I think I'm going to add um, a little bit of these into some epoxy, and I may add a little bit on there as well. Because I've been dying to see how these look in epoxy. See how they're just like, they're going to get all over my cup. They're just like little tiny. that guy up and so like I said it's gonna be this technique is it's similar to the Milky Way you just go a little bit lighter handed on the stuff that you're gonna be adding so we're not gonna do quite as thick lines because um, we're actually gonna add a tiny bit of heat to this in the areas that we add these to see it's just a really pretty I feel like there's a glare on there can you guys see they're just like big chunks of pretty like opal glitter. Uh, you can really, honestly, you can use anything you want. Um, you can use acrylic paint. You can use, um, you know, like the regular acrylic. You can use, um, I like to use acrylic inks a lot of times with my Milky Ways. I know those will work. Micahs, if you mix a lot of mica into it, like this, this is just mica. It's just really, really, I added a lot. So, um, cause I like the really like intense mica look to it. So I added, um, more than I needed. <laughs> Thank you. I, like I said, I may end up making another one of these cause I just, I love it. I want it. <laughs> All right, so I think first I'm going to add, um, I'm going to go with the colorants. So I'm going to add, not the micas first, but I'm going to add the colors that are not translucent quite as much. Uh, today I am using um, some dispersion color and some intense color from CCDIY. This one is really, really thin. They're made for, they're two totally different products. Um, this one reminds me of acrylic, because once you add it to epoxy, it gets thicker. Like the epoxy, see how it gets, it's, it reminds me very much of acrylic. 
All right, so we're gonna start. And this color, I'm gonna kind of not add it specifically in the purple, but I'm gonna be adding it primarily to mostly just the purple, but I'll probably add just a little bit here and there on other parts as well. And like I said, it is really stringy. So I'm gonna kind of just drag it, which is the same thing I do when I make um, my Milky Ways. So that aspect is not really too much different. I kind of handicapped myself with this one. I never, ever, ever have my turner turning to the right. I always have it to the left. And after I did my live on the glitter part, I was thinking and I'm like, that's not the way I usually do my cups. So I don't know what I was thinking, but you get to get to join me for the first time with my turner turning the other way. <laughs> So right now there are just kind of like little strings going on and then I'm going to add a little bit of heat to it after I get my colors added on um, and it'll kind of move it around a little bit and I'm not going for it to like move it around big time just a little bit. I want to get just a little bit more of this color on that one that one strip over here. This one. Oops. We'll just kind of go down with that guy. All right, so let's put that guy down for now. Oh, thanks. Um, actually, I did, if you want to check in the group, um, a couple days ago I did, on Monday I believe, I actually did um, them live. And you can catch it as the replay if you want. Um, Alright, so the next color I'm using is this one. And as you can see, the consistency is totally different. Because like I said, there are two different kinds of colorants. This one gets thick because it's more of, like I said, reminds me of acrylic. This one does not get thick. This one actually, if anything, it may make the epoxy a little bit thinner. So this one, for now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda go on the teal color that I have going. And then I'm gonna make it just a tiny bit over into the um, purple. So I'm just going to let it kind of, not worried about getting it covered. So I'm just kind of adding it here and there. And this one, because it's thinner, I may actually just kind of go like this and actually kind of like touch my cup with the stick. And you can kind of move it around. I like to make them different than everybody else's. So I'll kind of do this part sort of a little bit like that. And like I said, we're going to be using the heat after um, to move this around a little bit. So, and normally for when I do cups like this, I don't use heat. So that's, that part's a little bit different than normal. I'm just going to add just a little bit right here.
that's good with the purple. I don't want to add too much of it because it is a very uh, like intense color. And we're going to be adding micas and um, other things as well. So now we'll go with that pretty mica right here. And we're going to add that kind of in the same areas <clears throat> that we added this. So we'll just kind of, and like I said, I'm just kind of putting a little bit on my stick and I'll move it around a little bit just that way. Um, it'll kind of dribble, but I don't get too much on there. And then I'll probably go on this part, I'll probably go um, a little bit in where these purple areas are too, because I don't want it necessarily just, um, like purple in those spots. I don't want to add too much but I want to add kind of just so when I add that little bit of heat to it it's just going to kind of move around a little bit all right and then let's see so we still have our purple so now I'll go with the purple and I'm going to do um the same thing. I'm going to add a tiny bit on both of them. Because I don't want to cover all of the glitter. Um, but I definitely want some of the mica in there to kind of go with it. So I'm just putting a little bit and I'm kind of like barely touching the cup. Just to kind of help pull it along. I'm gonna kind of break this up because this is a little little KO on that purple right there. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna add after this I'm gonna go in with the gold. And I'm only going to do the gold, like I said, more towards, that's going to be the only one I'm kind of leaving in uh, the purple areas. But see how none of them are moving yet. And that's why I let the epoxy sit for a couple minutes because I really didn't want them to shift. So now we'll go in with this color. I'm not sure even what color this is. I mean, I know what the name of it is, but... What would you guys say that is? It's like a copper? I don't know, it's not quite gold. I'm just gonna go in a little bit here and there with that.
I'm just doing a little bit of this color too. I don't want to do too much of it. And I think I'm almost done with this one. And then we'll just add a tiny bit of those um, flakes I had showed you. And then we're going to add a little bit of heat to it. And then we'll be done. Copper, yeah. That's what I'm thinking. It's just, it throws off. It's really pretty. I like it a lot. I'm just kind of spreading these out, not big time, but just a tiny bit, just so they're kind of, kind of, I like to go over it a little bit because they don't look like they're just like lines that are kind of put on there. Just kind of helps them spread out a little bit. I like this color right here too. I'm just about done with that one. And then I just want to peek at the, the purple one too. Just to kind of do the same thing before I add the last color. You know, yeah, and those are, they're so easy to kind of plop too much on there. And then once you do, it's like a frantic race to try to figure out what to do. But I found, yeah, definitely um, it helps. I found anyways, um, putting a, make sure, making sure that your coat of epoxy is thin enough before you actually add them. And it, it's a really important combination between that and just putting them on thin enough. Cause you always kind of forget how much they really kind of like migrate when you start doing stuff to them. You're like, holy cow, I don't realize I put that much on there. <laughs> so I'm just going to take this one and kind of do one more swipe with these dispersion colors and the intense colors just so they're not so solid and like I said they will move a little bit when I um, add the heat to it see how it's just kind of I just kind of sc scooping a little bit out that way when they move it doesn't necessarily, I don't want it to take over. I think that's, that's good. I love Bob Ross. <laughs> Just happy little accidents, right? <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of this here and there. Um, and then we'll, like I said, we'll add just a tiny bit of heat. And I think I'm gonna add this the same way as I did with the other ones. I don't wanna add too much of this because when I add the heat to it, it's gonna make it move like everything else. And I don't want it to move too, too much. Maybe I'll wait to actually add this until after the heat. Because that one I don't really want to migrate too much. So I have my heat gun. Sorry if it gets hard to hear. I have my heat gun on about 200 right now. Um, I know not everybody has a thermostat on it. It's not a big deal. Um, it's just a little bit cooler than I normally have it. Usually I have it um, more to get like bubbles out and stuff. So I have it cranked up a little higher. 
So right now I'm going to be going um, just over the areas that I turn it down a tiny bit. I turned it down to like 150. I'd rather have it a little bit too cool and turn it up than have the whole thing start moving around. So I'm just going to take the heat gun and I'm going to go on the areas that um, I added the mica and all that stuff into. And then once it goes around a couple times, it'll really help me see kind of the areas I want to maybe move around a little bit more. Alright, I'm going to turn it up just a teeny bit. It's not really moving anything. And it's not really moving a ton, um, but I don't want, like I said, I don't want to make it start like swirling all over the place. That's why I have it at a lower heat. That way I can turn it up a tiny bit if I want to. see how the bottom I turned it up a little bit more um, but it's moving around but it's not like taking over everything I just don't want it to get so warm to the point where it starts like turning into mud everywhere
to think of where I got this. Oh, goodness. Uh, it's called Tack Life is the brand. It comes with, like, a whole bunch of different tips and stuff, too. It's pretty cool to, like, strip paint and all that stuff. But, yeah, it's neat. The back of it has a, um, a thermometer on it, a thermostat, kind of, so you can change how hot or cold it blows. I've never used, I know a lot of people use the other ones um, for their tumblers, and I've never tried those ones because I, I like the fact that this one had a temperature on it because I have more control over kind of if I can get close to my project or sometimes you just need to pop air bubbles and you don't want to get it too hot um, so it kind of takes a lower heat. So that way you don't end up kind of going overboard with it. And then I'm almost done with this part. Um, and then I'll go in and I may just kind of add a little bit of mica right there. Just to kind of break up that big piece of purple hanging out. And then that's when I'm going to add in uh, a little bit of that flake, too, that I had showed you. Alright, I think I'm good with this part. I don't wanna like I don't wanna move it anymore, I don't think. I think if I move it anymore it might start to get swampy. And I don't want it to do that. So I'm gonna take um let's see, for that purple. I'm gonna take just a little bit of this right here. I think and just kinda go up in there to break up a little bit of that purple. So see how it's now it's not just like a big piece of purple hanging out in there. There we go. I'm kind of liking it now. Okay. And then now I'll go in and I'll just add that tiny bit of these that I wanted to add in there. here and there. I'm not really adding um, a ton of them. I just wanted to see what these would look like. I thought they'd go pretty on there.
And these work too, even if you find that you may have put like a heavier spot than you wanted to. I found if you take just plain epoxy and you kind of put it on there, um, it will actually kind of separate, see like right here, I put that, it'll actually kind of separate your colors. So that's a way to break it up too, that I found is pretty neat. we're gonna be good so then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm not taking any more heat to this um, but the only thing I'm gonna do is I like to spray with alcohol and I did heat it up a lot so I'm sure I probably don't need to but I like to do that sometimes actually with um, these ones the intense colors you can kind of make cells with it too um, by doing something like that Um, so this one right here, I have a few different kinds. This one right here is actually the CC DIY, the medium viscosity. It's one of the new ones they came out with. It's thinner than the regular one. But that's what this is. So I'm kind of learning with this one too, because I'm used to using, um, a resin that's a little bit thicker. But this one is, it's super, super, super shiny. And even though it's a thinner resin than the other one, um... I was quite surprised how much it covered my glitter when I did um, epoxy on it because I was a little bit not too sure how it was going to cover to be totally honest um, because it's thinner and I like a thicker resin and by any means it's not like water um, but it's definitely not the consistency of uh, the regular that they have or of um, like the FX premium that I've used for a really really long time. I think I just want to take a tiny bit right here. And that will be it. Stop touching it now. So, um, and then for the alcohol, I use 91%. It's really important that you use 91% if you're going to try to use alcohol. Um, if you use anything below that, it's going to give you massive fish eyes. And I found that out the hard way. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thanks for uh, tuning into it as well. Um, and Saturday, make sure you guys don't um, miss it too. We're going to be making some fun bowls. Um, and I actually got some acrylic diamonds to put in that one. So it should be really fun. We're going to make one kind of like this. And I have glitter all over that. So I'm going to keep it away from this right now. Um, so do you guys have any questions about this one? And if you do after, even if you're catching the replay, um, Definitely ask in the link or you can send me a message um, and I would be happy to help or one of the awesome members in the group would be. Uh, so thanks for tuning in. Uh, yes, alcohol helps with the bubbles big time. If there's sometimes when it's turning you get little bubbles that kind of surface. Um, especially on a project that you don't want to add heat to. Like this one I don't want to add any more heat. So. Um, Similar to your molds, if you want to pop the little micro bubbles, you can just spray it with alcohol. Thank you. So, like I said, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful Wednesday. And I guess I'll check you guys later. Have a good one.